guys. So today we're going to be doing something that I'm so excited for and I feel like I've really been looking forward to making this video. And yeah, that is basically your survival guide to wait for it, a successful MFA thesis. So yeah, I'm super duper happy and super super glad to finally be able to share with you guys that I not only passed my final defense, I also got nominated for outstanding thesis, which honestly is kind of just a miracle in itself. Uh, yeah, I went into the MFA program really devoid of expectations. I was just kind of unsure of how to move forward with writing and all of that so I'm so freaking happy and I feel like I'm finally in a good place to share what I've been doing with you guys and to uh, yeah just be able to offer some help to those of you guys who may have been struggling with a lot of the same things that I faced over the past few months yeah past nine months actually just like a baby, it took nine months to birth this thing and get it out there. I think I should give you guys kind of some context on what my thesis is about or what my thesis project was. Basically, because I am in the MFA Creative Writing program, we are sort of required to do a creative thesis. So I was working on a poetry collection and some of the rules were that the poetry collection needed to consist of at least 30 poems and that number was pretty daunting for me, especially thinking in terms of something cohesive. Although I think on average poetry collections are about that length, if not a little bit longer. And we also had to have a portion of the thesis that was dedicated to a theoretical framework. And of course, a review of related literature that would also put an emphasis on the localized Filipino culture. So kind of thinking about what your work has to contribute to the body of work that's currently existing in um, sort of the Philippine canon, um, Philippine arts and letters, that kind of thing. And for the theoretical framework of my thesis, I basically wanted it to rest on three things. The first one is the concept of indeterminacy, which is basically that um, the cohesion or collection or repetition of signs and signifiers don't really point toward a single meaning or a single answer but rather birth more questions and more answers that birth more questions if that makes sense so you can kind of think of it as whenever we ask the question why it's never gonna stop there it always births new whys if that makes sense and i also wanted to look at that vis-a-vis -vis film in particular nora onora's films and in particular, three of Nora Honor's romantic comedies because I was interested in romance, I was interested in looking at formulas of romance and also seeing how they could be kind of fractured and taken apart and put back together again. And the last constraint, which I know a lot of people <laughs> thought I was crazy for, is mathematics and functions in particular. I sort of was fascinated with the way that functions in math are very similar to the way that we talk about signs and signifiers in literature. So for example, we tend to think about like, um, yeah, about like a symbol or a sign consisting of the signified and the signifier. So like, yeah, the image and what that image represents. And that's kind of the way that functions are as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, that sounds like a lot. And it was really because of that, that, um, being able to come up with a cohesive thesis was really a struggle for me, especially a thesis that didn't alienate the reader and which didn't come off as just like a very solipsistic um, project that would just be kind of like me flexing my intellectual muscles like oh my god look at me I'm so smart or something like that. I wanted it to have like a human element and I really wanted that to show up in the poetry. So anyway, <laughs> long story short, I was just so glad that it turned out to be successful and that I passed and that I not only passed but seemed to accomplish something uh, great. <laughs> So even just the nomination of Outstanding Thesis is enough for me, especially because I respect the people who are on my panel so, so much. Anyway, <laughs> here are some tips to surviving and thriving when doing your MFA creative writing thesis. My first tip is probably to tabulate your data and tabulate the different quotations that you um, kind of want to get from the text. 
along with the page numbers and what section you want it to go into. I also feel like there should be a column on insights and yeah, just like what you what you think about that and what that has to do with your thesis. When you're reading a bunch of different papers, a bunch of different studies, it's really so easy to kind of get lost in it and to think like every paragraph like, yeah, this is relevant to my thesis. And it's that sort of situation where <laughs> you have a highlighter and then before you know it, everything is already highlighted, right? Everything is already basically yellow and you feel like you can use everything and so listing it down and allowing yourself to formulate your own ideas and your own arguments and say things in your own words and you can kind of think of it as you're trying to prove to the panel why this book should exist in line with that i think it's very important to solidify the integral theoretical framework and a lot of the times i think that people kind of mistake um, the theoretical framework for the genre of literature that they're writing in so a lot of people will be like, oh, my thesis is specfic, or my thesis is confessional poetry. That's not really a theoretical framework, although it's probably tied to one. When you think of theoretical frameworks, you can think of them as premises or ideas. Like, if you have a genre, what does the theoretical framework that you are studying say about that genre? So for example, one of the schools of literature that I used for my review for related, one of the schools of literature that I cited in my review of related literature um, was the Olipo school. And the Olipo school basically was obsessed with constraint and mathematical constraint in particular when it comes to poetry. They believe that that kind of constraint would set poetry free. So it's like showing contrast in the stringency of form and letting the meaning fly or like kind of shine through through that struggle, if that makes sense. And from there, I kind of talked about how my project would be different from Olipo work and how it would be similar. And so yeah, I think you shouldn't kind of um, be put off from looking at theoretical frameworks just because what you want to do is kind of different from that or deviates from that because you're also welcome to state that in your thesis. You can say that um, these people did this and that, but basically I am agreeing or disagreeing with them. You know, literature is discourse after all. My third tip would be to kind of figure out where your project fits. Which theories are you agreeing or disagreeing with? Um, are you trying to push more in terms of this particular literary movement? Or do you think that it's geared more toward this other literary movement? So those three first tips I think will be especially helpful when it comes to creating your project proposal and defending your project proposal. And once you have all of that done, you can kind of take a breather from all of the literary theory and just forget about it for a while. I think one of the things that I really struggled with, especially given how theory heavy um, my collection was, was sort of looking past that and just getting my hands dirty, getting really, really creative. And I think when you sort of set that aside, you are able to play and just let the poetry do what you want it to do. One great way that my mentor put it is you still have time after writing the poems themselves to be able to revisit the literature anyway and if there's anything there that you deviated from or anything there that you need to um, kind of pad with more literature you can always go back and review what you've written and yeah just add to the final project my next tip is about the poems themselves i would say don't cram <laughs> don't cram don't cram because you'll need time to get yourself in the mood and there's distinctly, I think, um, kind of a different mindset that you need to be able to write creative work or to be able to get in that creative mindset, which is just to let yourself um, experiment on the page and not be afraid to make mistakes and not sort of be editorially on all the time. Otherwise, <laughs> you won't be able to let yourself do anything. You won't be able to let yourself write an ugly line, which might be kind of a predecessor to a beautiful line. And so, yeah, just let yourself breathe. Give yourself time for for that um, sort of gen generative work. Give yourself realistic expectations. Don't be like, oh, by the second week, I'll have everything done. But, you know, artists need kind of a period to be able to creatively procrastinate, I think. And 
yeah give yourself that if you need to take another term off in la salle we have kind of a limit to how often we can do that so in my case i had um, the thesis proposal term i took one term just residency working on the poems and then the next term i defended so I think that would be a good way to do it because you still have a big enough time frame not to rush but you're not sort of gonna be you know one of those people that just stays in school forever <laughs> you won't lose momentum and once you're done with all of the creative work i mentioned earlier that you can definitely still revisit your thesis i would sort of suggest that instead of just copy pasting from your thesis proposal you start from scratch and <laughs> you kind of do it as a translation almost of the pre-work and the post-work so what i did is that i had up on two screens first my thesis proposal draft and then my actual thesis working draft and i would change the tenses but also talk about um, the project now as it is compared to the literature as opposed to previously where it was like what I would intend for the poetry to be like in terms of the literature, if that makes sense. And doing that just saves you from all of the errors, it saves you from kind of sloppiness, and it also saves you from not having everything be cohesive, if that makes sense. I feel like when we copy paste things, whether we like it or not, there will always be something that we will miss. And you have to think, I think, of the thesis document and the thesis proposal document as two separate animals you can't you can't just kind of edit one a little bit and turn it into this although all of the literature there i think is a good guide and a good starting off point another sort of vital factor is communication with your mentor i was really really grateful that my thesis mentor shout out to ayer was just so amazing and he was just so helpful with all of the all of the poems and sort of structuring them and advice on which poem should go where. Um, I also think that it's important to tell your mentor where you are kind of emotionally and mentally with the poems. Um, at first I was kind of struggling and was sort of behind deadline because at the time I only had I think 20 poems or so and we needed 30 to be able to you know move on and I was asking a year if like should I wait until I get to 30 or should I, should I already pass these to you and you can sort of tell me what do you think about them and he was like yeah definitely pass them so that we can at least get the ball rolling and I think that's something that we don't emphasize enough like thesis is also a collaboration between yourself and your mentor and I think the more that there's already something concrete to comment on the more productive you'll be in the long term so as soon as you feel you have kind of a good base collection even if it doesn't meet 30 yet like just send it to your mentor ask for comments and be open about where you're struggling I think I mentioned that I was struggling with how to end it and also struggling with how to keep it human, you know, make it not so alienating, make sure that it's still accessible without dumbing anything down. I'm not sure if it's the same for all of the universities here in the Philippines, but in La Salle in particular, we were sort of tasked with coming up with a presentation to present on the day itself. And <laughs> I think uh, something that I would have done as opposed to the way I did it, although I am still quite fond of my thesis presentation, is to think about it as a guide on how to read your poetry collection. Um, I think a lot of the times when we think of our panelists, um, our professors, we think, of course they know what we're talking about, right? Like, of course they are well-versed in all of this, but I think it's always good to kind of clarify what you mean. And if you think about a professor, they're probably reading like times five, thesis right so yours is just one of them and they're bound to kind of have some ideas um be in this sort of gray area where sure maybe you brought it up but you didn't really expound on it so yeah i would say treat your presentation as a guide on how they can follow along with the poems and how they can read them how they can evaluate them Next, I have to say, kind of more overall, avoid perfectionism. I'm not saying don't strive to have a great thesis or don't strive to do the best you can. I mean more like sometimes perfect is the enemy of good. And when you're a perfectionist, you will just not really achieve anything because you'll sort of be caught up in the tiny, tiny details of things without being able to make progress. 
you can also kind of think of this as a math test in a way. When I was a kid, I remember the first time I failed a math test was in prep because I got so fixated on the problems that I couldn't solve. I ran out of time and didn't get to put answers even on the questions that I already knew were easy or I knew would you know, just be a piece of cake for me. So what I did instead here is to settle for for a certain degree first of, of creative output. So for example, with a poem, I wouldn't want it to be perfect outright, but I'll just come up with the first draft and then go back to that when my mind is refreshed. Edit, check again, edit, check again. Um, yeah, progress over perfection. Definitely. Right before your defense, I would say it's also a good idea to practice. I was super lucky because my friend Ostir and I practiced. Um, we had a Zoom call and we just presented our thesis projects and also gave each other some notes. And I think that's very, very helpful because it'll help you be less nervous on the day itself and it will also help you understand which parts you kind of need to study up on. I realized that one of my weaknesses is that sometimes there will be a slide, but I won't know exactly the quotation that I'm grasping for. So that way I was able to make some notes so that I could uh, kind of write properly and <laughs> present properly and just figure out what I was gonna say to supplement that slide. Don't forget to support your fellow MFA um, friends and your fellow MFA classmates. Um, I'm realizing throughout this whole like grad school process that your support system is really everything. Um, your support system will help you kind of, you know, do it, like give you the encouragement to be able to do it. And I'm so grateful for my friends, um, Austere, Will, and Eunice. And yeah, we just had this like little writing group and feedback group and stuff. And also it's good to support other people too. So I went to Austere's thesis defense because we are the only two, I think, from our program in poetry who were defending this term. And it was just so nice to be able to see him shine too and to offer that moral support. I think writing in a vacuum is never really healthy for you, at least not when it comes to evaluating your project. So yeah, be a supportive and a good friend. And last but not the least, I think it's very important to trust yourself, know yourself. Once you've practiced, once you've done all of the work, just give yourself a pat on the back and say, you can do it. <laughs> this will also come in handy when answering questions from your panel. Trust in yourself. You already know what you're doing and you've had time to prepare for this. I hope this was a helpful video. If you have any questions about your thesis proposal, thesis project, thesis process or whatever, or anything about grad school in general, just leave me some comments down below and I will answer them. Or if there are any other kinds of videos you'd like me to make, hit me up and let's see, maybe we can make them. Thanks guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Also don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you haven't followed me already. I post a lot about books, productivity, and just some fun stuff too. A lot of coffee on that feed. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time, bye.